escort and procession for the Bozeman helicopter pilot who's remembered as a selfless hero. I'm Annie Johnson with more coming up. Plus, coming together to combat a crisis, how a hospital and local government are teaming up. And the November showdown is officially set. President Trump formally accepts his party's nomination. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Thanks for making MTN your source for news tonight. I'm Tim McGonigal. Keely Van Mittendorp is off this evening. Well, all over Gallatin County, people were taking time to remember Tom Duffy, the Bozeman pilot who died in a helicopter accident helping battle fires in Oregon. MTN's Annie Johnson brings us part of his escort and processional this afternoon for those wishing to pay their respects and final goodbyes. It was a tragic accident that ended the life of a Bozeman helicopter pilot. But instead of focusing on his death, those who were impacted by his life choose to remember him with laughter. What we'll all remember about Tom is uh, him squeezing himself into helicopters and then being able to fly those helicopters like nobody else can. He's such a great pilot. I mean, I've flown with him. He, I mean, he was just incredible up there. The Bozeman pilot died in a helicopter accident Monday, but his community gathered to honor and say their final farewells Thursday. I'm here just to pay my respects and just say goodbye. Just say goodbye. Duffy used his skills as a pilot serving various organizations like the Gallatin County Search and Rescue. It's, it's a sad day for us all. Uh, we're going to certainly miss Tom and his skill as a, as a rescue pilot here in Gallatin County. The things he's done for the community here uh, has been invaluable. And he'll be remembered not only for his efforts to his community, but also his heart for others. Just a great guy, a pillar of the community, generosity, a big heart. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll be missed. He's a, a size and a half man with a, a heart to match that and a kind, gentle giant that was funny to try and watch crawl himself into a helicopter, but absolutely one of the world's greatest mountain pilots. Duffy's funeral service and burial will be held privately and only open to close friends and family. Reporting at the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, Annie Johnson, MTN News. Well, back here at home, we're learning a body has been recovered from the Missouri River in Great Falls. As of right now, there's no word on the identity of the person. We don't know if it's a male or female. We also don't know how long the body has been there. Still a lot of unanswered questions. On Monday, a man reportedly jumped from the Warden Bridge along 10th Avenue South following an extensive search. Nothing was found and a missing person report was never filed. As soon as we get more information, we will keep you updated on air and online. A man Helena police were looking for in connection to multiple sex crimes was arrested in Denver, Colorado yesterday. 22-year-old Connor Andrew Jones was arrested on 18 counts of surreptitious visual observation, two counts of aggravated sexual intercourse without consent, and sexual abuse of children. According to Helena police, the investigation started back in February when a Carroll College faculty member discovered what appeared to be a hidden camera recording uh, people in the bathroom. After identifying and interviewing victims, detectives executed a search warrant on the suspect's apartment and found recordings and images of suspected sex crimes, including child pornography and rape. Jones is currently being held on $250,000 bond in the Adams County Detention Center in Colorado. Meanwhile, Carroll is encouraging anyone who believes they may have been victimized or uh, has any information that could assist in the investigations to immediately email safereports at carroll.edu. Montana has begun issuing new unemployment benefits made possible through an executive order by President Trump. Today, Governor Steve Bullock announced Montana's receiving, Montanans receiving unemployment insurance will get an extra $400 a week from the Lost Wages Assistance Program. Montana is one of a handful of states to request the benefits from federal government and the program issued $31 million this week. Bullock says the state took advantage of the program because many Montanans can't afford to wait until Congress comes up with an alternative solution. We didn't wait to act because we know that these are greatly needed benefits that put money in the pockets of Montanans and ensure that they can continue taking care of their families during this difficult time. 
The governor also addressed the new school year and the frustrations that many families are experiencing. The state left the control of sporting events and attendance in the hands of local governments. Bullock urges Montanans to work constructively and respectfully with their local health and school officials as the school year progresses. Well, today the Lewis and Clark County Commission unanimously approved funding for a mobile crisis response team with St. Peter's Health. Funding for the mobile CRT comes from two grant sources totaling $47,000. The unit is part of an overarching strategy to improve the behavioral health care in the community. A behavioral health specialist will be able to respond alongside law enforcement to assess individuals in crisis for mental health or substance abuse and help de-escalate the situation. County commissioners and St. Peter's both agree mental health impacts everyone in the community, whether they're aware or not. Not all of us experience mental health, not all of us even know people with mental health. Um, but even if you don't, it's affecting you in some way. It's affecting our ED wait times for you to be able to uh, be seen in the ER. It's affecting our capacity in our hospital. St. Peter's is now seeking applications for individuals interested in the position. They hope to have the team up and running in the next couple months. Well, a lot of Montana businesses are struggling to get by during the pandemic, but it's a different story for parts of Montana's farming industry. Fort Benton broke ground on a new fiber hemp processing plant today. Fort Benton Mayor Rick Morris was joined by Montana Democratic Senator John Tester and employees with Indy Hemp for the ceremony. The industrial hemp company is already providing dozens of new equipment, uh, new employment opportunities in Fort Benton. And over the next several years, they hope to expand operations in Fort Benton and even build a second facility. Today's groundbreaking was made possible by the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill, which legalized the regulated production of hemp in the United States. Senator Tester said he hopes Fort Benton becomes a hub for industrial hemp. And there's a lot of these small towns that, that they look like they're dying. But I think Fort Benton's really going to benefit by, by the amount of jobs it's going to bring. Hemp is used in many everyday products. It's part of a family of plants related to marijuana, and it's legal in the U.S. because it has much lower levels of the psychoactive drug THC. Well, we have a couple more days to enjoy the sunshine before a weekend cool down. Here's MTN's Elizabeth Copeland with your first forecast. All right, hey everyone, back at it again with a lot more of the clear conditions this evening than we saw earlier. A yeah, shower actually moved through the capital city earlier this afternoon, and then that cleared out. We were seeing some blue sky out there. A lot more of the clear sky now with just a few of those dotted clouds across the sky of our Opportunity Bank ICAM overlooking the capital city. So that dry air is going to move in and it's going to stick around for a while. There'll be some haze on the skyline, but moderate to good air quality conditions are being reported across the state tonight. So better air quality. We're going to have a lot more of the air from the west rather than the southwest move in. So we're going to see drier air move in, push out the remaining storms that are still in the forecast tonight. And temperatures are finally going to stay right about average as at least we head through Saturday. So the last two weeks, we've been well above average, holding steady anywhere between 13 and 8 degrees above average the last few days. But we have some big changes in the forecast as we head through the end of the weekend. We'll still be tracking those warm temperatures at least through Saturday afternoon. President Trump closed the Republican National Convention tonight by giving a speech to accept the GOP nomination to be their presidential candidate. The president rallied with supporters on the South Lawn of the White House. The president continued his calls for law and order amid nationwide protests following the police shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Your vote will decide whether we protect law-abiding Americans or whether we give free reign to violent anarchists and agitators and criminals who threaten our citizens. A major hurricane has hit American shores during three out of the last four Republican conventions. President Trump says he considered postponing tonight's speech because of Hurricane Laura, but instead he will visit the impacted areas this weekend. The dog days of summer are here, so why not let the furry friends make a splash? We'll take you to a fun and water-filled tradition next. Multiple sclerosis may be a part of who you are, but it doesn't define you. Despite MS, I will keep riding my bike. I will still dance with my husband. I will continue to be the strongest mom that I possibly can. In Montana, our rivers and streams belong to the public. 
So when wealthy landowners tried to block access for fishing, Steve Bullock led the fight to protect our public access rights. Bullock took on his own party to defend our Second Amendment rights and fought back every effort to transfer our public lands. And you know what's great? Every one of us own these public lands. Because that's what's right for Montana. I'm Steve Bullock and I approve this message. A dealership shouldn't just be your source for buying a vehicle. At City Motor Company, our factory trained team of highly certified technicians are prepared to address all of your needs. Our full line service center includes Quick Loop, Collision Center, Parts Department, GM Accessories, and Tire Center. Depend on our expert technicians for reliable safety that you and your family can count on. At City Motor Company, our family legacy continues after more than 65 years. The Ferris tax is the one you pay on. Greg Gianforte pushed for a statewide sales tax for Montana, and he got a $3 million tax break. Gianforte helps himself at our expense. But Mike Cooney's for us. He wants a constitutional ban on the statewide sales tax. No sales tax, period. Mike Cooney knows us. Greg Gianforte only knows you pay my bill. about taking care of himself. Each year in Montana, more than 100 people are killed in crashes involving an impaired driver. And over 350 are seriously injured. That's 450 reasons to drive sober. What's your reason for planning a sober ride? Extra patrols are out. Drive sober or get pulled over. A message from the Montana Department of Transportation. Money talks. For Steve Danes, it always has. As a businessman, Dane spent six years in China opening factories there as his company eliminated jobs here. Danes was paid well, and now he's one of the richest members of the Senate. In D.C., Danes has taken $700,000 from drug and insurance companies and voted four times to gut protections for pre-existing conditions. When money talks, Steve Danes listens. Can't trust him to be from Montana. DSCC is responsible for the content of this ad. You're watching KRTV, Montana's news leader. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back with the summer and peak tourism season winding down. We're looking into the impact of COVID-19. As MTN's reporter Coulter Anstat explains, it's not surprising that the summer season has been tough for local businesses. Walk into the O'Hare Motor Inn in downtown Great Falls and the sound of the front door opening may be the loudest sound you hear. Occupancy is down significantly to the point that our occupancy numbers this summer are less than what we saw in December, January and February. While the summer season was worse than expected, Owner Sandy Thayer says better days could be just a couple months away. If we can get the Canadian border open before the holidays, we may see a good November, December holiday retail season. If we don't, it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt everyone in Great Falls. Great Falls, Montana Tourism Director Rebecca Ingham says tourism is slowly returning to normal. Our office was closed um, uh, April and most of May. We came back to get ready for June 1st reopening of the doors and on June 1st we started seeing in market guests again. Um, and what we were seeing was about 80% decline in June. July, we've seen about a 75% decline over the same period last year. And then this month, we're expecting to see about a 65% decline. Perhaps more important, though, is getting back out of town visitors, who she says spend around $160 million a year in the city. That non-resident visitor spending is going to be felt across the board. Unwelcome news for businesses trying to be prepared for an uncertain future. Right now, it's day by day. We have no idea what to expect tomorrow or the next day or even the day after that. In Great Falls, Coulter Anstat, MTN News. Angam says her office is working hard to market the city to surrounding states and to help businesses market themselves. Well, for animal lovers, the uh, home uh, time home during the pandemic means even more opportunities to take pictures of pets. Now those looking to share shots of their four-legged friends can also support a nonprofit. 
McLean Cameron Animal Adoption Center is looking ahead to 2021 by rolling out its first annual pet calendar. Owners can reserve a calendar date online to feature their pet or can choose multiple dates to spotlight animals over months. The center will feature one pet per day in the printed calendar. And maybe it's the gotcha day for your pet, or maybe it's your pet's birthday or a memorial of a pet that you've loved that's passed away. When we do produce the calendars for sale, there'll be a picture of your animal and a short little message. Volk says proceeds benefits center operations and educational programs. The last day to purchase dates and submit pictures is September 30th. Calendars will go on sale in November. There are options to purchase larger photo spaces in the calendars. We have more information on our websites. Well, those on two and four feet uh, seize the opportunity for fresh air today at the annual Drool in the Pool event. The Electric City Water Park has hosted the event for years as a way to celebrate the end to their season. Great Falls City Aquatic Supervisor Patrick King says they saw a slight decline in revenue due to the coronavirus pandemic over the recent months. Pool patrons and those at tonight's Drool in the Pool event say the night provided some much needed family fun as students return back to school. We're excited to get the dog out and get her some exercise. The kids are back in school, so they're not playing with her. So it's just a fun time to um, enjoy a nice end of the summer evening out at the pool with the family and the dog. This was the last event for the season at Electric City Water Park. Storms move out and clear skies move in for the end of the week and beginning of the weekend. We track some big changes by Sunday, though, coming up next. Take Storm Tracker weather with you. Download your free KRTV weather app from Google Play or the App Store. Sponsored by Access Fitness. Money talks. For Steve Danes, it always has. As a businessman, Dane spent six years in China opening factories there as his company eliminated jobs here. Danes was paid well, and now he's one of the richest members of the Senate. In D.C., Danes has taken $700,000 from drug and insurance companies and voted four times to gut protections for pre-existing conditions. When money talks, Steve Danes listens. Can't trust him to be from Montana. DSCC is responsible for the content of this ad. 66,000 Montanans have filed for unemployment. Career politician Mike Cooney says we're doing just fine. Cooney doesn't have a jobs plan. He's running for governor to raise our taxes again. For 44 years, Cooney has been a tax and spend politician, supporting nearly $1 billion of higher taxes and fees, receiving a 0% rating from the Montana Chamber of Commerce. Career politician Mike Cooney, too liberal for too long. Steve Bullock stacked his coronavirus relief task force with high value donors. Those donors stood to benefit and now they have. State records show businesses owned by at least three members of Bullock's task force have gotten money. Meanwhile, just 13% of relief funds had reached Montana small businesses and towns. Bullock sat on millions in urgent aid while his own donors cashed in. Steve Bullock just keeps playing politics. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Attention cattle farmers! We have reports of cows disappearing at an alarming rate. There can only be one answer. Carnivorium! 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 It's the first of its kind and it's coming to Great Falls. Carnivorium! Go to carnivorium406.com. That's carnivorium406.com. Carnivorium! It's a bad day to be a cow. The Second Amendment is an important part of our Montana way of life. But Steve Bullock has become too liberal to care about our freedoms. In Washington, Bullock will vote with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer for liberal gun control. That's why the NRA gave Steve Bullock an F. A fifth generation Montanan, Steve Daines will always protect our Second Amendment rights. That's why the NRA gives Senator Daines an A+. I'm Steve Daines and I approve this message. Montana This Morning starts at 4.30 this Monday. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Elizabeth Copeland. 
Welcome back on this Thursday evening. Thanks again for letting me fill in for you North Central and Northeast Montana, where we've had a mix of some active weather and dry air. Now we see the dry air moving in at a pretty increasing rate here. So across this line, all behind really Glasgow to Butte, all that dry air is already funneling in from the northwest to the southeast. Not too many clouds left in the sky, maybe seeing some smoke on the horizon as the sun sets tonight and you wake up tomorrow. But otherwise, air quality is actually really improved from the beginning of this week. We do have a few of those very light showers now moving out. Most of those will be gone by the midnight hours. So if you have some later Thursday night plans, early Friday morning plans, we'll be waking up to a lot more of the sunshine. So we did have a few stronger storms then push through Poplar and across the northeast corner. Those are now out. We're looking at even some dry skies there as that dry air funnels in, but it's still pretty windy out there. Really 20, 25 mile per hour gusts even higher across the northeast corner. We're getting that wind again, that drier air mixing in as well. And those two ingredients, of course, really push up our fire danger levels. So red flag warnings are going to be still in effect for places like Opine, Glasgow, down to Jordan and Malta all until midnight. So any fires that do start will spread rapidly because of the wind and really dry conditions, even though we did see a few very light showers this afternoon. Now heading into the next few hours, again, dry air really pushing in as you wake up tomorrow morning. So 7.30 a.m. opening up the blinds, again, a little haze on the horizon, especially across the high line, but but really the air quality is not too bad. We're not looking at any unhealthy for sensitive group air quality, especially early in the morning throughout the day. Skies stay clear as well. A lot of sunshine to be seen across all of Montana as those storms stay out. But as we head into the beginning of the weekend, and especially the end of the weekend, that's when the big changes are going to occur. So right now we're going to be under this zonal flow, which is basically this west to east flow of that air. So the southwest flow we were having, that's what brought in all that wildfire smoke. There's still a potential of some of that wildfire smoke in our forecast, but really not seeing as much because that air from the west is going to bring in a little cleaner air, even though there are some wildfires over in Washington. Now the big changes are going to start occurring on Saturday, not with temperatures though, still in the 80s in the afternoon, but you see these lines here, these potential heights are getting really close. That's a good indicator of those breezy conditions really settling in, especially across western Montana and parts of the high line. And then Sunday moves in cooler air from the north really starts dipping in, especially from the northwest. So that low pressure starts dipping down from Canada colder and drier air from the northwest start moving in and we're going to see breezy conditions on Sunday as well and then even a little cloud cover as we head into the beginning of next week. So those breezy conditions are going to bring us about 25 30 mile per hour gusts. So if you do have plans to enjoy at least the last day of warm weather out there on Saturday, probably going to be a little choppy out on lakes because of that high wind, especially closer to Fort Peck and those very open lakes. So be out the lookout for that, especially as we head into the weekend, the choppy conditions on Saturday. And then again, the big temperature drop on Sunday. We go from 88 Saturday to 61 on Sunday. Some of those clouds build in. We're looking at isolated to scattered showers late on Sunday and early on Monday morning, holding steady in the 60s through the beginning of next week. Helena's last day of warm weather and seasonable highs are going to be on Saturday is 86 degrees and then 62 on Sunday. We'll still hold steady in the low 60s to start next week. Thanks, Elizabeth. And when we come back, let the games begin before football players hit the gridiron, soccer players take to the pitch. The Great Falls ICAM is sponsored by U.S. Bank. The best part of teaching these kids is seeing the spark in their eyes as they master the skills for a better job and a better life. So it's critical that Governor Bullock made record investments in our schools, expanded career training and apprenticeship programs so people can earn while they learn, and boosted public-private partnerships to create more jobs, to grow our economy. Tell Governor Bullock to keep building on our progress during tough times. Payless Furniture and Mattress is the chosen site to liquidate manufacture overstocks. Overstock sofas, overstock recliners, overstock sectionals, overstock mattresses. Save on manufacturers overstocks now. Don't wait for your furniture. It's in stock and ready to haul away or have it delivered. We're the chosen site for the manufacturer's overstock sale. Only at Payless Furniture and Mattress. Central Avenue West, Great Falls.
Steve Bullock stacked his coronavirus relief task force with high-value donors. Those donors stood to benefit, and now they have. State records show businesses owned by at least three members of Bullock's task force have gotten money. Meanwhile, just 13% of relief funds had reached Montana small businesses and towns. Bullock sat on millions in urgent aid while his own donors cashed in. Steve Bullock just keeps playing politics. Senate Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. For bottled spirits, there's just one name you need to know. Nobles Westside Liquor Store. From the basics to the exotic, Nobles gives you a king selection that will fit your taste, style, and budget. See for yourself. Nobles Liquor Store, the king of selection. I can do this. We believe in you. Every day, millions of people celebrate recovery from addiction and mental illness while others begin their journey. Be a part of it. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders, call 1-800-662-HELP. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, not all Class AA sports have to wait until next month to get started. Golf started early last week and soccer kicked off today with CMR hosting Billing Senior, Great Falls High hosting Belgrade. MTN's Isaiah Dunk has the highlights. Billing Senior paying a visit to Great Falls CMR. On the girls' side, Bronx off to the fast start early in the first half. That's Abby Thompson, the freshman, scoring there. Senior is up one to nothing. Then within a couple of minutes, here's Eliza Bentler. With the goalie all over her, doesn't matter. She converts 2-0 senior in the first half. Still in the first half now. Penalty kick from Peyton Kerwin. No good on that one as Robin Blair saves it. But senior wins 5-1 to start the year. On the boys' side, 3-0 senior at the half. Rustler sophomore John Hustis in at goalie after a yellow card. And he gets the save. But this one was all senior. 4 nothing now, and here comes Simon Rolfson with the fancy footwork, and he will score as well. 5 nothing Bronx. Late in the second half now, wrestler defense out of position a little bit, and Dylan Jaconson will take advantage. 6 nothing Bronx, that's your final. Belgrade visiting Great Falls High to start off the year. Girls are up first. Bison up 2 nothing at halftime. Panthers trying to get the offense working, but that shot from Peyton Robertson is no good. Later, Bison have a chance to add Hallie Thompson on the penalty kick. But that one's collected by Mackenzie Turner. Still 2-0, Great Falls High. One more chance for the Bison here. Emma Paycheck out in front. That shot's wide left, but Great Falls High hangs on. 2-0. Boys are up next. Bison up 1-0 in the first half. Ethan Hahn muscling it through here. Now it's 2-0, Great Falls High. But they're not done. Watch here as the shot is blocked, but Gavin Groeschel comes in and cleans up. 3-0 Great Falls. Panthers need a score now, and here they come. Off the corner kick. A mess in front of the goal, and Christian Atchison is there. But the Bison would hold on 4-2, your final. All right, thanks, Isaiah. Well, six seasons ago, Fort Benton was forced to forfeit its football season due to a lack of numbers. Flash forward to 2020. And the Longhorns are one of the most dominant eight-man powers in the North. Tom Wiley takes us to Shoto County. At Fort Benton, there's a lot of optimism for the 2020 football season. River boys on three, we're jumping right into tackling. One, two, three! River River boys. Boys. The Longhorns return a powerful squad that advanced to the eight-man semifinals a year ago. I feel like we got a lot of athletes, like we got a lot of weapons, we are contenders. I feel like we got a lot of unfinished business we got to do this year. And they live in an area where social distancing is the norm. We're pretty blessed right now. We feel like there's zero cases in Shoto County and, mm -hmm. and we're feeling, uh, feeling good about things and we're getting to play the game of football and that's really what, what these guys want to do. Head coach Jory Thompson has had to look at the situation from all sides. He's a coach, the parent of a senior, and the superintendent of Fort Benton Schools. Uh, it's, it's been really difficult, obviously. Mm -hmm. Thankfully here in Fort Benton we're surrounded by, or I'm surrounded by great people. Obviously it's a uh, ver a very strong, very contagious virus, and so we need to be careful um, within reason, and, and we need to not live in fear. Mm -hmm. I think that we need to um, still live our life and, and provide the opportunities for our children 
that uh, they deserve to have. The pandemic has already taken away a chance at a basketball trophy and wiped away a spring season where the Longhorns were favored to win a track title. So far this fall is moving forward as expected and Fort Benton's five seniors are grateful. This year it was kind of hard for us so I think we're just kind of hoping this season is the whole season and just kind of hoping for the best trying to play as hard as we can every day because you never know when it might quit so. Smack on three, one, two, three, smack on. Tom Wiley. MTN Sports. And don't go away, we'll be right back. Getting stimulus help for your business is almost impossible, unless you're friends with Steve Bullock. Bullock's COVID task force is packed with his biggest contributors, secret stimulus meetings, and donors being some of the first to benefit. Through July, only 13% of stimulus money have been distributed, while Montana small businesses fight to survive. Steve Bullock, helping his friends, helping his family, hurting Montana. Think about that. NRC is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm Caroline Bullock. I'm Alex. And I'm Cam. Our dad likes to talk about us. This time, we're going to talk about him. They're teenagers. What could go wrong? My dad loves Montana. It's where he grew up. He was raised in a single parent household and met our mom, Lisa, at the same school we go to. Go Bengals! I love fishing with him. I love running with my dad. He was by my side when I got my first buck. We'll be hiking, then he'll always be like, And, and you know what's great? great? Every one of us owns these public lands. <laughs> I'm really proud of the work that he's done for our education system. He's been fighting against secret money and politics since before I was born. Practically since he was born. I love teasing him. When he's talking, he's like this. He does not know how to whisper. This is Steve, boy. Hope they don't bring up the dancing. He may not be a great dancer, but he is a great dad. He's doing the best job that he can for my generation and for the generations to come. And if you want to know what kind of senator he'll be, just look at what he's done as governor. I'm Steve Bullock, and you bet I approve this message. Real hard work. It's what makes America, and it's what will bring us back. But in Washington, D.C., this is what they consider hard work. It's all about staying in office. I'm Matt Rosendale, and I understand real hard work. As auditor, Rosendale cut operating expenses 23% and refused to pay raise every time. We need term limits on career politicians because we have to change Washington to get America back to work. I'm Matt Rosendale, and I approve this message. I run with Cooper. Usually four days a week, but we haven't been able to get out for a while now. At Benefis Health System, our primary care services are dedicated to your overall wellness because we want to get you back to doing what you love with the ones you love, a tradition of advanced care. Learn more at Benefis.org. Another few days of warmer weather and sunshine are in our forecast, 88 on Saturday, but that's when the wind also picks up 25, 30 mile per hour gusts. On Sunday, big temperature drops happen across all of Montana. Good 10 to 15 degrees in most areas. We top out at 61 on Sunday in Great Falls. The capital city will be sunny and warm on Saturday with the breeze picking up, especially in the afternoon hours. On Sunday, we hit 62. That rain moves in, clouds build in. We have a few isolated chances on Monday as well. Well, millions of little robots could someday move within the body to help battle disease or help repair injuries. Researchers say these little robots could be injected into the body and controlled by laser technology. They now want to create sophisticated circuitry to allow the robots to move according to changes within the body. The robots already have survive, already can survive extreme temperature changes and highly acidic conditions such as in the gut. All right, we want to thank you for staying up late with us tonight. Don't forget Montana This Morning comes your way early tomorrow morning. We'll see you tomorrow.